of our lives, uh, you know, as teenagers, we, we are exposed and uh, influenced by our teachers. And uh, I hope Mr. Horan, as he was a young teacher then, as we were getting ready for this cool world that we are now a big part of, uh, I hope we influenced his life as a teacher, Indeed. as a young teacher. Indeed. Indeed. And it's, it's great to have him here with his unquenchable enthusiasm. Yeah. And I'm sure he'll offer us some food for thought. Yes. And so be it without any, any further ado, Mr. Tom Moran. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, one score, 10 years, and 100 pounds ago. <laughs> You know, psychologically, it may not seem, you know, like one score 10 years and 100 pounds ago, but each morning when I bend down to pull on my socks and slip into my shoes, I guarantee you, it feels like one score 10 years and uh, 100 pounds. Thank God for uh, long-handled uh, shoehorns. <laughs> Incidentally, I cherish my Braddock memories. I love Braddock and... Uh, for what it's uh, worth yesterday and today. It has great uh, nostalgic, symbolic value to my uh, psyche. And uh, some of the memories that, uh, even today, when I think back, uh, the hairs on my forearm stand at attention when I recall uh, our marching band going along Braddock Avenue and Long John Ferber doing a stutter step <laughs> to keep in time with Terry Lint on the drums or something like that. And then the, uh, the neighbors, the residents, hanging out their window applauding at all the pageantry. And then came the cheerleaders with their pom-poms and their ultra-bright smiles ushering our, our warriors to and from the uh, ball field. Yeah. And they were in their stocking feet with their shoes hung over their uh, strap, the, the shoelaces tied and they're strapped over their shoulders and uh, they were winners one and all before as well as after the game they're beautiful memories I remember uh, the uh, pep, re pep union or pep rallies down in the auditorium I can see Joe Stukas in his tailor-made suit <laughs> the creases razor sharp his professorial glasses his lips pursed and he'd be turning north, south, east, and west when all the mischief would be one, you know, one degree to the left or right of them. And I can remember John Gay, like a quarterback. Every time they had a speaker, they often had speakers who were kind of self-serving politicians. And John Gay would always, and almost appropriately, saying something scandalous and irreverent to the entertainment of all those who could hear. Great memories. And, I, and another, another cherished memory, um, I don't know about you, but... Uh, commencement night, uh, when you graduated, I, I think today when I read in the paper, people graduating from the Civic Arena and Benedum Hall or Heinz Hall or the Vista, I think, hey, can compare. Class of 1960 graduated from what I consider an architectural masterpiece. It can be shrouded in soot. The Carnegie Library had class. And when you graduated, you were the class of the class. That's a fact. Not so incidentally, uh, I made my high school teaching debut, maybe to your regret, uh, in your senior year. English. English. Senior English. <laughs> Katie Kirk was my uh, critic teacher before that. I'll tell you what I might do after, after I get done with my few remarks. I might go from table to table, and if you have a question, about what you always wanted to know about Braddock, but dare never ask. <laughs> I promise to give you an unvarnished truism, no matter what, no matter how personal. <laughs> Anyhow, the, uh, the Braddock memories are etched uh, permanently, I guess, until Alzheimer's takes over. I might add that collectively, the finest people I've ever known are my former neighbors from Mount Washington, where I was born and raised, and the good people of Braddock. Uh, the people of Braddock were always uh, 
undescribably supportive and friendly and warm, and I cherish their friendship. Uh, to give an example, uh, my wife can even attest to this, about a year ago, almost to the day, it was a Wednesday, I was going golfing, and I had a confrontation with an infamous uh, North Hills contractor, and he, he was a hot dog, and a scoff law, and he was all wrong. And next thing I know is kids would say, he's up in my face. And I responded as spontaneously as my next breath, and I said, hey, hey man, you can't intimidate me. I'm from Braddock. Yeah, I'm from Braddock. I felt it and I meant it, you know? But be that as it may, you were my first class. And uh, believe me, I learned more from you than you probably ever did for me. I was later on a much better teacher. So my belated apologies for not being, you know, more dynamic. But you were great kids. And I truly enjoyed the experience. One thing about the Braddock school system, I always felt very deeply that uh, even though we did not have a charismatic faculty, and may, <laughs> we did, let's face it, maybe we didn't. And let's also face it that our, our facilities were not avant-garde. But I really believe that Braddock, the Braddock schools were a haven for incidental learning. They truly were. We, our, our school system was a microcosm of America. It was a microcosm of society. And we had every dimension of humanity represented. And you know what? If we had only been able to focus in on and rationalize why those individual differences occurred or why they existed, we all would have had honorary PhDs in sociology and psychology. I've always felt, furthermore, that if a Braddock, a Braddock kid didn't even have to graduate, but anybody from Braddock who wasn't overwhelmed by drugs or booze or bigotry or those other extreme vices, they would be today's leaders. And if they weren't the chief executive officer, they would certainly be a dynamic citizen, intimidated by no one. And I really feel that way. Anyhow, you were great. You were great. Not only great to me, but great, period. And you were handsome then and you're handsome now, with or without mustaches, with or without beards. And you know what? You were all bright, and you were all outstanding, and you were as unique as the midnight sun. You all were. Furthermore, like your parents, you were unaffected. You had no major debilitating pretensions. You were all uh, very, very level-headed. Sure, you had your escapades and your whims, but basically you were A+. Plus. And I hope that you haven't forsaken the values that your parents instilled, because I think they're, they're durable. A lot of the fluff today can never survive the long run. I often think of you, and uh, in case you question my, if you think I'm patronized, you can check with my wife later on. I often think of Braddock. My wife and I will hop in the car and take a ride through the uh, back serpentine roads of uh, North Park. And to fight Alzheimer's, we'll recite poetry, and I'll give her one line, she'll give it back. But there's one, there's one that I do solo because she doesn't have the background for it. And if you'll indulge me, each evening from December to December, before you drift to sleep upon your cot, think back on all the tales that you remember A Braddock. Ask every person if he's heard the story and tell it loud and clear if he has not that once there was a fleeting wisp of glory called Braddock where once it never rained till after sundown, by 8 a.m. the morning fog had flown. Don't let it be forgot that once there was a spot that for one brief shining moment was known as Braddock. Okay. Have fun. Thank you very much.